Hello everyone, welcome back. I uh, just wanted to thank everyone. I posted my last video and didn't think I'd get much in the way of any views or anything, but I actually got a couple and stuff and I was quite surprised. Um, anyone who's watching now who hasn't seen any of my videos before, I know people click on and then click away quite quick on a lot of YouTube videos. Um, and I was just thinking, you know, rather than me standing in my shed talking to myself, holding my cam phone, I, uh, you know, give me a comment and let me know what it is you'd like to see. It was, it was my surprise. I was going to put the, you know, school and goldfish. Never seen that before. Yeah. So give me a comment and tell me, you know, give me a critique of what you think you like, what you don't like, what I could improve on. You know, I'm open to all that. It, it gives me a chance to engage with an audience. Um, anyway, so I received a order from Star Fisheries this morning. Um, well, Dylan has got up nice and early, done a large water change on the tank to get air. I always like to keep fish in fresh water. Um, you know, when I receive new fish, I like to keep doing water changes over the next few days. You know, keep the water in tip top condition. It, you know, helps the fish out and it makes me feel better about the whole situation. So, anyway, I received um, three Arandas. No, sorry, three Ranju and a total of five Aranda um, and here they are here I was going to put the Rancho in this tank and then in the other tank I was going to put the Aranda I kept pointing at that saying that they were going in there however I've had to drain that tank um, you know what I've spotted some substrate here and then what I've noticed is there's water creeping along the seal um, I don't know whether you can see that, but it finishes there, so it goes right into the corner. So there's a good, what, two and a half foot, which tells me the seams. It looks like the main seam to the tank hasn't failed. There's a piece of braced glass here, and it seems like the water's getting down behind it. And if I move it, you can see the water moving. So I thought, rather than take the chance, what I've learned from experience is rather than take a chance with something like this, I'd rather just deal with it um, so the Aranda and Rancho came in the same bag anyway so you know it's not like I'm cross contaminating fish although my fish is in with them but I thought I'll quarantine them all together keep an eye out I haven't really noticed anything on towards at the moment um, I've noticed one of them's a little bit floaty which tells me I might have a bit of a problem with swim bladder and you know people say to treat this with epsom salt and you know peas and things like that however swim bladder tends to be a structural thing in the fish you know it's the, usually the structure of the swim bladder so i don't believe that doing these things is going to help it in the long term if swim bladder's deformed it's deformed and nothing's going to repair that there's no there's nothing you can dose in your tank that's going to fix a swim bladder um I just noticed one of my little Arandas up here eating duckweed. <laughs> I put some duckweed in and uh, the, my original ranch seems to mow through it. Like most of it's disappeared already. Yeah, so what I'm going to do with this tank now is I'm going to, I've drained it, I'm going to empty it. I, I'm not taking the chance. What I've learned is, you know, if you take a chance, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but eventually that thing that your gut feeling was telling you to deal with it's gonna fail. You're gonna to have to do it, and it could either you can deal with it before the problem occurs, or you know, you end up with a catastrophe. And as everyone says, prevention's better than cure. So that's what I'm gonna do. It'll also, give me a chance to clean this tank up properly. As I said on my last video, I kind of rushed this together, um, and now things are in place. I can take a bit more time to do things. So what I'm gonna try and do is get into this cut. If I can't reach this far corner comfortably. Because what I'm going to have to do is take all the silicon off and, and give the tank a good clean. So make sure the glass inside is spotless before I reseal it. I'm going to see if I can get this piece of glass out and reseal. I'm not going to take the glass to bits. So I'm just going to remove all the internal silicone like here um, and reseal it. As far as I'm aware, silicon doesn't stick to dry silicone. So... I'm going to have to take it, I would have done it anyway, but I'm going to take it 
down, take all the old silicone off, clean, get the internal glass a really good clean, uh, wipe it over with some acetone to get any silicone residue off that's there, and then I'll reseal the tank. But if I can't reach into this corner comfortably, I'm going to leave it for now, I think, because I'd like to, because as I say, I'd have to remove this tank to remove this tank. And what I'm planning on doing is overwintering the fish and then setting up ponds outside once the temperatures start getting up you know i would like to i would like to get them in separate tanks you know i'm going to keep an eye on them i'm going to check the ammonia nitrite and nitrate over the next couple of days the tank's cycled but if i get anything because there's more stock in the tank um i could always use the, the bottom tank here and separate them but I say, I'm keeping a close eye on everything. Um, I tend to do plenty of water changes when I get new fish anyway, because water quality is obviously really important. Um, I say, I've noticed no bottom sitting or anything, so, you know, the signs are good at the moment. It's just this one fish here, with the black on his tail, or her tail, I don't know yet. Seems to, uh, she seems to go floaty in the back, he or she seems to go floaty in the back. I haven't noticed anything since it was in the tank. So I'm just keeping an eye on that and I noticed what potential, uh, one of the fish darted, one of the ranchers darted across the tank. So I thought is that a sign of flashing? So, you know, I'll keep an eye over them over the next couple of days. I don't like to just treat fish for the sake of treating them. I, I read a lot of posts that's, you know, people quarantine fish and then start treating them straight away with all sorts. And I think, well, what's the point if, you know, if you don't need to, don't. Sometimes medication can be quite stressful for fish. So if you've got new fish in a tank and then you start, they're already stressed, so their immune system's already compromised. And then if you start dosing unnecessarily in the tank, I feel like that just you know, adds insult to injury for them. So I tend to believe, and that's, that's what I want to get this channel about. I'm not telling people how to keep fish. I find every post, every forum I go on, a lot of YouTube channels, they're telling people how to keep fish. I'm not telling you how to do it. It's you know that's not my thing. What I'm doing is telling you how I keep fish, and what I do, the experiences I've got and stuff. So I just wanted to get that point across. Um, and what I, I'm a firm believer in, a lot of things that nothing good happens fast in a tank. You don't get up one morning and your fish has grown six inches or salt water, you know. One of your little frags hasn't turned into a into a massive coral overnight, but it could strip overnight and could die. Like good things take time in an aquarium, so I like to change something and then have a look at it in two weeks, see where it is. You know, bad things tend to happen fast, and we have to react to these quickly. Like this, you know, that could fail and blow a panel out quite quickly. And I don't want to get to that point, so I'd rather deal with it now. Spotted the first early warning signs, and I'm going to deal with it. Um, and that's that and then new fish I'm going to keep an eye on the parameters the ammonia, nitrite, nitrate over the next couple of days um, and do a few large water changes probably do daily water changes and then I won't feed them today I'll feed them every other day and I'll build it up slowly the amount I'm feeding them so I'll feed tomorrow what I'd normally feed the one fish and then I'll take it from there although you can hear them now, they're eating the old uh, duckweed on the top of the tank already, so, you know, it keeps them happy, doesn't it? And I'm not sure, I think it's better for them than dumping a load of pellets that release a load of ammonia into the water. So, as I say, I'll keep you updated. What I'm going to try and do at the moment is post one video a week. I haven't got... Uh, any editing software, I haven't got it. I'm just recording on my phone and posting the video I've recorded at the moment. I've got a computer and um, at the moment it needs an update. There's there's a problem with the Windows software on it and it's it's a good computer. So once I get that update, all up to date, uh, I'll look at getting some editing software. And then, you know, if I get more and more subs and stuff, I'll, uh, you know, Gives me a chance to make better videos, better quality videos. I could get a camera, stuff like that. 
Um, it'd be nice to take people on a journey and show them what I like to do because you know, I've been keeping goldfish for about 25 years. So there's my update. Hope I haven't bored you with because I'm finding it hard to talk about stuff. Uh, I have a great idea of what I want to talk about in my head. As soon as I press record, all goes, mine goes blank. So I say, comment, let me know what you like, what, what you think I could be doing better, and we'll take it from there and progress the channel. Thanks very much for watching if you watch this far, and have a nice day.